The Big Ten Conference has opted not to impose any further discipline upon an Ohio State hockey player who was given a game misconduct against Michigan State for what Spartan forward Jagger Joshua claims was the repeated use of a racial slur. Joshua, who is black and whose brother played at OSU, posted his account on Twitter saying the OSU player used the slur multiple times and within earshot of the official who handed out the original penalty. The conference released a statement Monday saying it had collected and evaluated information from the officials, teams, and video footage, ultimately deciding, quote, due to the absence of indisputable evidence presented to the conference, the conference has not imposed further disciplinary action, end quote. Over the last few weeks, I've uh, gone through a range of emotions. It started off very hopeful and optimistic with uh, the ref taking action on the ice and showed we were moving in a positive way, but after kind of how the situation was handled, it's left me pessimistic with how uh, diversity and the movement of diversity in hockey has uh, been going. Sadly, this isn't the first time that I've experienced hate or negativity in the sport of hockey. Playing hockey since a young age, myself and my older brother have always gone through and experienced some type of negativity or backlash playing hockey and it's something that being somebody of color can obviously deter you from wanting to play hockey and experiencing the love of the game. The way that words can have an effect on somebody and discourage African Americans and minorities like myself to play and, and love the game of hockey is something that I felt the need to speak up for and I want the people that have experienced that to know that they're not alone and that their voice is heard and I know it might not feel like that, and that's something that I struggled with and went through myself. I was honestly a little nervous when I first talked to Coach Nightingale about this and how I felt, and he's been supportive of me ever since, and that came with the support of my teammates, and they really have been my strongest support system going through this whole process. There's been multiple guys on the team that have helped me and really did encourage me speaking out because they obviously seen firsthand how the decision or the indecision made me feel. So that's something that I'm grateful for. After my public statement, the love and support I've received from not only Spartan Nation, but the community as a whole has left me feeling very good and reassuring about me coming publicly. I've gotten countless messages and calls from people like me that have gone through similar experiences along with parents that you know their kids are struggling with this and if I didn't it's almost like I condone it and these actions need acknowledgement and need to be said publicly and need to be in the public eye. As a four-year member here at Michigan State of the Diversity Leaders Committee, that's something that we stress is creating an atmosphere for student athletes to voice racism and, and express their experiences. That has allowed me and given me the confidence to speak out. And I realize that my voice and my platform has given others a voice. And that's something that is important to me. And I know that there's other people out there going through the same experiences and, and struggles that I experienced. And so by me speaking up allows them to speak up. I understand that not everybody has the platform I have and in giving way to others to be able to speak out. And so that's something that I'm truly blessed for. I mean, I really wanted to focus on putting my energy in, in change and inspiring change and educating people about this topic. And I really do have forgiveness in my heart. I do realize that not everybody's perfect and we all make mistakes. And this is something that can be turned into a life lesson for myself and the individual. I really wanted to take this time to say thank you and really words can't describe how the support and love has made me feel throughout this whole process. And this was one of the best ways I thought of in saying thank you and in showing my gratitude towards everybody that has supported me and is in my corner. And that's something that I'll forever be grateful for. Hockey is for everyone, and I want everyone to feel welcomed in the sport of hockey. Today 
is the 25th anniversary of our team. So we have two boats that we're naming after the class of 24 and the class of 04. And so it's exciting to finally get a name on the boats and celebrate our program. celebration we have two boats to dedicate from the classes of 2024 and 2004 yeah, so pretty exciting to have boats dedicated by two class years 20 years apart the name of the boat is Molon Lave which means come take it a Greek phrase a tribute to a king Leonidas in reply to demand by churches we fight for every inch we fight for our teammates we fight on the herbs we fight on the water and everything else and I think this name really represents our team as a whole. We just want to thank you so much for everyone that made it possible to donate and we're super excited to finally have a name on it. So go green! Go white! <laughs> 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 It'd be fun to tell you a little bit about some of the names we went through. Only rule that we had was it could not be named Bodie McBoatface. <laughs> we were stuck on that for a while. A favorite game like Red Light Green Light, something to commemorate our first varsity head coach, BB Bryan. So that led us to naming the boat Grand Legacy. Grand for the river that we spent so much time on. <laughs> a river that gave us strength, determination, and success. A belief that even at 40 we can do anything. And for those that have rowed before us, and for those that are rowing now, we hope you find strength in the legacy that you're part of. Go green! Go green! Oh, <laughs> We're from Western New York, and I have two older sisters, one of which is her mom. And I wanted to go somewhere different than Western New York, so I visited Michigan State on a day like today in the fall on a football Saturday. And I was like, I'm gonna go there. You know, we get to see each other like a lot, but something like this is pretty unique because like it wasn't anything that was planned, obviously, just kind of <laughs> randomly happened. I'm so happy that she gets to come because I still have my best friends here, and it's really cool that she gets to have the same experience. The tremendous support we have from our alumni base is incredible and supports our program moving forward and being as competitive as possible. And it's really neat to have two class years, 20 years apart, dedicating these shells. We actually finally getting a new facility and it's really exciting to see the progress that we've made. Like these girls have paved the path for our program. There's not a lot of teams that really have rowing and we were one of the first teams to have it. So them paving that path for us just creates that much more progress for where we are today. We're leasing and renovating a facility in Grand River Park uh, that's right near the boathouse. And so we'll be able to have a uh, room that fits the entire program, uh, new locker rooms for the team that supports having such a large roster and ultimately rowing tanks. And there's incredible support for the sport of rowing. The Big Ten Conference has grown, Division One rowing has grown, and rowing at the junior high school level has grown. There's tremendous support for it moving forward, and it's really exciting to see more opportunities for women. First quarter, up to Cloud, throws it into the left corner. Osmond, a three, got it. Nothing but the bottom of the net from Tori Osmond, who knocks it down. Osmond does what she's famous for and picks up a charge. Osmond really knows how to fall. Cloud out to Osmond, puts up the three for the win. Bang! Tori Osmond for the win! I always get asked why I came to MSU, and Honestly, I wanted to go somewhere different. I've been in Georgia my whole life. I love the Big Ten, and I kind of just wanted to step out of my comfort zone and go somewhere new, face adversity, have some obstacles, and kind of grow as a human. We had just gotten back from media day. We had practice the next morning, so I got to the gym like I usually do. I warmed up, we started practicing, we were scrimmaging at the end. I was in a trap and I kind of stepped wrong. I, I felt a tweak and I immediately went down, grabbed my knee. Dean was working with them on the press and we were in a scrimmage situation. And I can remember the ball just going down to the other end. And all of a sudden I, I see there's like one last person and it was delayed 
but then I heard a delayed kind of scream. And I've heard an ACL scream before, and that was it. And I was like, no. We were taking hits left and right, and we just couldn't afford to take another one. And when she went down, my heart sank. The emotions that I kind of felt when I found out was a lot of sadness, obviously. I went through the whole summer. I thought I worked harder than I ever had. I was the strongest I was. I was just really ready to have that senior season that you dream of since you're a little girl. The first thing I turned to was my mom and dad, and especially my mom, she tore her ACL before too, so she could kind of relate to me more than some other people, but also Julia, she was going through a season-ending injury as well, so we could kind of lean on each other, and we had that friendship, and we had already built that kind of connection, so she was a huge help. We were always super tight, but those five days drew us even closer. The day she got hurt, I was with her the, the whole night, and then five days later, she's doing the same for me. Honestly, my injury, it, it hit me hard, but that hurt more than mine ever could. Just hearing that like someone else had to go through this too, it broke me and we couldn't believe it. Like we thought that there's no way, like back to back like that, like there's just no way that this just happened to both of us. And I think it definitely was emotional. Losing Tori was tough. I mean, certainly we lost to other kids too, but I think Tori is someone that team first, comes from a championship program incredible family, understands our core values. It's always about the person to her right and her left. So outside of the talent that we lost and the experience we lost, we lost somebody that really represented what being a Spartan's all about. I really appreciated how she bounced back from that, how quickly she flipped to what can I do for the team. Being on the bench, I tried to lead, and one way I tried to lead is just being their biggest cheerleader, being someone that no matter what, I could encourage them. They saw me cheering for them. They saw me showing up for them. That was the biggest thing I tried to do because sometimes that injury can suck your positive energy out. So I tried to just keep that up. I think with Tori, you know, one thing she brought every day, it, it didn't matter what was going on with her. She really did everything she could from the sideline to project an upbeat. We got this mentality, and I don't think that was easy every day for her. She's just someone that really invests in not only the work ethic piece, but also like her teammates too. Her leadership grew in so many ways. She took it upon herself to attack everything with her best. And I just think that within itself is such great leadership because people follow that and people want to be like that. Not being out there, obviously, it's, it's tough to have a voice because you're not out there. You're not doing the things that everybody's doing. You're not physically tired. There's just so much that goes into being out there. And I think it was hard for us to kind of find our role at first, but I think we really did a good job of like trying to be a light in kind of a dark season, a dark time. And I think we did a pretty good job of just bringing energy and putting a smile on our face, even on days when we didn't want to. And I think, you know, it, it helped us too, being around everybody, because we still felt a part of everything. Definitely that injury had its negatives, but I think it had its positives too. And I believe that everything happens for a reason. So I had to trust that um, even in those darkest moments. I think one of the reasons, I still don't know everything, it's far beyond my understanding, but one way that God used me during last year was to just help other players and the younger players to kind of share my wisdom to them and maybe use my story as a guide for them whenever they reach those obstacles or those dark moments. I tried to just use myself as a role model, a teacher, a leader, and kind of just focus on them instead of my injury. The grind during my recovery was hard. That's the only word I can really think about when I think of all last year. It was an everyday process. There wasn't many days where I was able to just walk in and not do something, but mentally was the hardest part for me. I had to learn how to retrust my knee and retrust my body. I chose not to wear a brace, so I really just had to train my mind every day during a workout or rehab on the court to trust my body, and God brought me back to play, so there's also a purpose in that and to just trust that.
Fisher will track down the offensive rebound. Driving to the middle of the lane, can't get the floater to go, but Osmond will clean it up and put it in for two. Dory Osmond, six points in her welcoming game back after tearing her ACL last year. When I look at my freshman year self and I think about myself now, I just kind of smile to know that that 18-year-old vulnerable girl just from a small town that's, you know, from Georgia, to see how much growth that she's had just as a human and as a woman. If I had to say anything, I think I would just say thank you to Tori because college isn't easy. She's gotten me through a lot of it. And her friendship, the way that she's been there, I couldn't have done it without her. So I just wanted to say thank you to her and hope she knows how much I appreciate her. Me and Julia had talks all the time about not giving up. This happened to us for a reason. We're both out and we want to play with each other again, at least for another year. And we had to remind each other that we held each other accountable. We did really well at that. I think I'm most proud of just not giving up. I was 22 and most people, you know, they'll choose to just let the sport go or to not come back and I knew that's not what I wanted to do. I had a bigger purpose. I worked so hard to get back and I had so many great people around me that worked with me to get back and I'm so glad I never gave up. Part of the growth of our group is one, you got to come to the rink and believe you can win, and then two, we got to keep learning and growing. And no different than any other game, we, we found some things out that uh, we liked and some that we didn't. And for us as a program, we, we want to be a, a team that finishes right to the end. And I, I really liked our push there. I thought uh, there were stretches where we tilted the ice and we're on our toes, and um, we got to look to do that for a full 60. Jim Krieger, and he got Tucker yes. on the back door shot. Go!
I liked our push in the third, and we talked to our guys about going out and winning the third period. I was proud of our guys for that, and it was good to see that push from our guys. You know, I think that says a lot about the character of the group, and, and when things don't go your way, I really think that's when character's revealed, and I thought we saw a lot of good things out of our guys. Davidson to the base of the far circle. Mueller around behind, wraparound attempt, slammed the door again. We find some things we need to keep growing as a, as a team, and when you talk about developing, um, it's not always a straight path up, and there's some steps back, and um, playing a really good team. Every time we play, it's less about our opponents, about us, we want to play our best. When we play fast and we play competitive at the puck, you find some things out you got to get better at, and we'll, we'll start to work on that on Monday. Pick up one of those rebounds that we've been seeing all night. We've grown a lot, and you know, here in the first uh, 18 games as a group, but we still have ways to go on. Obviously, the end goal is we, we want to be the top team in college hockey, and I, I feel like Minnesota is one of them, and so it's, it's good for our guys to see that. Great turnout, super appreciative. Obviously, that's not the result we want, but I did think our guys played hard. I think they can be proud of the effort, and I know we're not in it for effort. It's wins and losses, but for me as a coach, that's what I value the most, and I thought our guys did a good job of that.